All right, folks, it's another Friday in the life of the world, September 4 in the Gregorian calendar. Welcome. Um, I'm Citizen Jones. Today on the program, President Buhari approves third phase of eased restrictions on COVID-19, extends PTF's mandate to December 2020. Now, soldiers and civilians flee Borno communities, seek refuge in Medjugorje, the capital. Just as five police, uh, five men, no, no, 15 bandits were killed by police, arrest 50 suspects in Kassina. And later on, we'll share this with you. Motorists and commun commuters groan as marketers implement new petrol pump price. I'm hanging out with Asukwa James, sitting in for Jide. Jide is uh, avoidably or unavoidably absent? Unavoidably. Or, or, or one of them? Unavoidably Okay, absent. okay, it's all right. <laughs> Okay, uh, but we have on Skype uh, Dekule Yusuf. Kule, how are you? Good evening. Good evening, I'm fine. All right then. So the team is ready. I hope you are. All right, let's go. You know, ordinarily, when tough and unusual times set in, you rely on loved ones and family members for succor. But for a novel pandemic like the COVID-19, you embrace a totally new regimen that keeps family and friends away for safety. President Muhammad Buhari approved a third phase of eased restrictions on COVID-19. Uh, again, chairman of the presidential task force, PTF, on COVID-19, who doubles as secretary to the government of the Federation, SGF, Boss Mustafa, has let it be known that whereas indicators don't support a full reopening of the economy its mandate to manage a containment of the pandem pandemic is extended to december 2020 anything is still possible james exactly anything mm. is possible you know <clears throat> just like uh, boss mustafa he seemed to be the only one always let me use that word like a pastor admonishing nigerians <laughs> you know that mm. um, we shouldn't just think that there's no more uh, rest COVID. on our hours. Yeah. You know, there's no more COVID because if you if you move around town from what he has also seen, so many people don't don't think um, the virus is still around. Yeah, you, you know, know? The, the news just broke that former Italian Prime Minister Berlusconi mm -hmm. is uh, has tested positive, positive for COVID. For, yeah, for COVID. So ah. it shows that um, the thing is there. So yeah. you, you should, as a person, take personal responsibility to either wear your face mask wash your hands regularly because that is that is one of the things that people you know hardly do and, and then sanitizer i remember yeah. then when the the covid they were talking about and sanitizer and that was very expensive yeah but now nigerians are taking it upon themselves to even produce you know these sanitizers and so it is everywhere so everybody is encouraged to always put that in yeah. their in their purses, yeah. in their pockets, and all that, and to, to move. But most uh, boss Mustafa has always re reiterated that you have to don't think that there's no COVID. Yeah, the thing is there. The numbers may be down in Nigeria, but out, outside Nigeria, it is not. Uh, People uh, are still told, dying. No, no safety in numbers. Yes. that's what we are told. People are still dying. The so-called flattening of curve has not flattened even in the organized societies. Now, but we have decided to say, okay, fine, um, let's not test. Because what, I, what, what I've noticed is that we are not testing more, and that is why the numbers are going down. Because if we test more, citizens, if we test more, so many people will, okay. will, will come out having COVID-19. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, the news I'm hearing is that Judy Majanos joined okay. us electronically from Abuja. But let me uh, reach... Adekule Yusuf, who is here in Lagos. Uh, Adekule, uh, the government has relaxed the, uh, you know, the nationwide curfew from midnight to 4 a.m. Any difference? Does it make any, any difference? Does it change anything? Yes, it does change a lot of things. Because uh, we, COVID or no COVID, we still have to, you know, resume our normal lives. But uh, I like the approach the government is, you know, employing in the sense that they are trying to make people to understand that this relaxation does not mean that 
we are finally, you know, say the end of COVID in Nigeria. We still need to mount, you know, enlightenment campaigns. We still need to let people know that there's a lot they can still panic about. You know, there are some societies that have, you know, jubilated. You know what they have now? They are returning into, you know, uh, huge cases now. They are getting huge cases now. So we don't want Nigeria, you know, to have that. So I like that approach. But because of level of poverty, you know, hunger and all those things, people still need to work. So the more, you know, the government, you know, after, you know, evaluating all the parameters, they realize that people can still, you know, you, you, see, you will see that uh, uh, schools now, they said dates have been given for schools to reopen. Then when you go to states at the state level, you see what is happening. Many of the state government are trying to say, okay, so so date, you come on. So, so date. Today, the Lagos state government uh, officials uh, were the, you know, Moritala um, International Airport, you know, international flight will begin from tomorrow. So you see the commissioner for it, you know, he just recovered from COVID-19. Professor Akin Abayomi and uh, the deputy governor, they were in the international airport, the Muritala International Airport, you know, to inspect the state of you know, preparedness that are really ready. And so you, you just want just to make sure that nothing goes bad again. So I think the approach of government is you know, it's encouraging so far. All right. Yeah, I, I hear we can now. Uh, have a beeline to Jide in Abuja. Jide, good evening to you. How do you do? Good evening, Citizen Jones. Yes, sir. How is uh, your Friday going? Uh, it has just started. <laughs> no, don't worry. We'll send the bills to you. But let's talk COVID-19. The third phase is uh, here. Yeah. Uh, the third phase is here. And Nigerians are still adopting this look-see attitude. Uh, are we likely to key in? Jida, are you there? Okay, I'm, I'm saying the mm. third phase uh, has just taken off, and um, PTF is likely to uh, take its uh, its 12th duty to December. But are Nigerians okay with what we are doing as a people, as a polity? Yeah, the truth is we... We had never encountered anything close to this, but now we have it. We know that we do not uh, have a choice. We have to continue to protect ourselves. We have to, as individuals and as a people, take control of uh, the situation. Uh, government has tried its best uh, to generate so much awareness about this uh, novel um, disease. But it's up to Nigerians now to ensure that our situation does not degenerate to the point where we could then be in some form of comparison with South Africa where more than 6,000 persons have died. Mm. We don't want to get to that point in our country. Yeah. Uh, the, the disease has been kept in check largely in our country. But we can do more in terms of abiding by the protocols uh, laid down by the presidential tax force um, on COVID-19. Our people do not want to lose any form of freedom <coughs> that they used to enjoy. So the idea of even putting on a mask for their own good is something difficult for Nigerians to agree to do. But we need to learn to do this for the time being. Nobody is saying that. Uh, this is going to be forever. It's just for a time, just for us to get to that point where we can safely say that we have defeated this pandemic and then we can begin to take back uh, the, 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 the number of routines uh, that uh, our day-to-day -day, uh, uh, lives used to be identified with. So this is the thing. Government is gradually easing up because to not ease up is to actually make things worse. We have to balance the need to continue to keep the economy healthy uh, with the need to keep Nigerians alive. 
and government has been able to uh, juggle things uh, in, in an effective manner. I do not want to put so much uh, to the figures emanating from uh, the NCDC because okay. these figures are influenced by all kinds of factors. Yeah. Some states yeah. are not collecting samples the way they used to collect samples. Some states are, in fact, even still suppressing um, uh, testing. And our testing capacity is nowhere near where it should be. If a country like South Africa has uh, more than 186 uh, test sites, yeah, yeah. there is no reason idea. why we shouldn't even have half of that. Okay. Right now, we do not even have uh, half of that. So uh, uh, yeah. I believe that we can still do a lot more to okay. keep this uh, pandemic in check and to ensure that our country uh, remains largely safe of this pandemic, just like Ghana, that has been really impressive in, in terms of the way they, they, they have dealt with it as a country. Otherwise, what you're saying is the stereotype should not tell me or you or even uh, Asukwa here, it is not my portion. So we've gone past that stage, right? <laughs> oh, okay then, um, Asukwa, you know, federal government has approved the reopening of NYSC orientation camps. Mm. So, um, light at the end of the tunnel. Well, well so it seems. No, so it seems, you know, because if you look at it, um, just like the reopening of schools, I, you know, like Adekunle actually said, you know, they just believe that things, we need to go back to our, to our normal lives. But in trying to do that, they also have to take um, into cognizance the lives of these children, mm. either for school or for those who are going to camp, you know. Because I know they can, they, there are better ways that the orientation or the, the camp can open in that, um, I, I, because the COVID, well, from what I've, I know about this COVID, it has made so many countries innovative in okay. terms of how to you know carry out their businesses mm. you know because if you look at the nysc camp there's nothing stopping us from saying okay let's hold on a bit because schools we are not even open in the first place so anybody that wants to graduate except it is only the private universities because those are the ones that we are doing online um, lectures yeah. online yeah. online exams but for the federal institution and the state they are all they are all at home so if you are now going to say, okay, the orientation, except it is the ones that have already, you know, been slated to go for a particular batch, there's a way that the government, you know, can open the orientation camp. Yeah. You know, it, it might not have the so-called um, two weeks, you know, campaign, you know, it can be maybe a week or you can do it virtually. They can register virtually, then you can immediately deploy them you know, to the different states, you it, know. But, but it, um, uh, so it, it will not... that we are playing catch-up. Yes. No, it, yeah. We're, we're playing catch-up. So that we do not endanger the lives of the youth, you know, okay. of, of the okay. students. Because the, the process, the moment we say everybody should camp, uh, should, you know, move into one camp, then from there they start to mix, except they want to say they will start doing the, follow the protocols. We keep saying everybody follow the protocol. After two days, the Nigerian factor will come in. Everybody will forget the face mask. They will yeah, forget yeah. the temperature, to check the temperature. They will mm -hmm. forget uh, everything. So the best thing is let's be innovative. You know, We can decide to, the NYSC for the past three months did not be, I, I think by now they should have been thinking of how they can do this. Yeah. You can tell that, you can tell to, um, those who have been slated to go you know, to camp, send your names, register on, online, then the state that you want, if you want redeployment, you can do it online. Then also tell us where you you like to be de deployed to. You can, you uh, can be anywhere. It can yeah, be here. Yeah. It can be this you know, online bank and thing all that. is a little unsettling, you know. I it's, it's so uh, because uh, yeah. that is where the future is. Okay, look at look, um, uh, citizen. Look at now. So many things that have been happening so fast yeah. since this COVID. Even our president that is always traveling. The only trip he made, the major trip he made, was in going to Mali, mm. you know, and that Mali was very, very essential, and you can we, we all saw the results. But every other meeting, 
has been virtual. Okay. Meeting with his ministers, with the ECOWAS, everybody. So and that is that is where the world is moving to. So we can do it. We, we can replicate it and not be do the old-fashioned way of mm. bringing everybody in one particular hall or one particular location yeah. and then begin to do the, uh, the campaign. Okay, let's go back to Yusuf. Uh, Yusuf, uh, government has released the names of uh, airlines that are likely to come in to, from tomorrow. Uh, if everything, all things being equal, and you know they are not always equal. So, uh, some airlines have been approved to come to Nigeria. It's uh, a phased thing, right, wrong, proper, improper. How do you react? No, very, very proper. What the government has done, you know, many people don't know, they didn't know that uh, Nigeria can, you know, show the most that sometimes you need to take critical decisions. Some of those airlines, some countries, you know, it's a matter of reciprocity. You do this to me, I do that to you. So you see what the government has done in countries where you still have high, you know, huge number of cases. You don't want us, you cannot come to Nigeria. You know, now of all the two, I mean, combined for the two airports, that is Abuja and Lagos, per day, you can only have 1,200. With that, these are some of the measures the government has, you know, is putting in place. With that, all the airlines, that each of the airlines that will come in, you know, is restricted to a certain number of passengers. So in Lagos, you can, you can never get more than 600 per day. In Abuja, total in a day is also 600. So because it must not exceed 1,200. So these are good, you know, measures. You know, uh, airlines like uh, Delta and Co, ordinarily, come in tomorrow, but I learned data has postponed. Some others will come. You know, these are very good. If you land in Nigeria, if you're a foreigner, you have to follow the protocols. Do your test, preferably within 72 hours, you know, before you come in. You must upload your test result and all those things. If you are if you are not a Nigerian and you break some of the any of these protocols, in the airline we pay a lot and uh, they will deport you back. I mean, they will deport you to where you are coming from. If you are Nigerian, you are not going to be sent back. You brought in, you, you really want to pay for test, quarantine, all this. So these are very good measures. If we observe all these things, as you know, uh, Azuko was talking about the Nigerian way, where uh, I pray mm -hmm. the Nigerian way doesn't come into play in all of this because Remember that this problem started from somebody from Italy, an Italian, who came into Nigeria. So we don't want uh, a resurgence of the cases. When you look at countries like Italy, countries like Poland, Netherlands, UK, France, many of those from Belgium, you know, as at March, April, May, they were having heavy, heavy cases. Then all of a sudden, they started, you know, rejoicing that, oh, Normalcy is back, but as we speak, some of them, some of them are still having cases. That is a resurgence. Are still having resurgence. You understand me? So it's not as huge as it was in the past, but there is a resurgence in many of these societies. Yeah. We should do everything never to experience a resurgence because okay. what we have here, our head, our head system, everything, we have to know the limit of what we can do. We should not allow a resurgence. Yeah, um, uh, uh, Yusuf, as I go back to Abuja to, to team up with uh, Jide, um, you'd realize a resurgence is here. That's if we go by what the NCDC is telling us. The NCDC has confirmed 125 fresh cases, bringing the grand total countrywide to 54,588. So it's not Uhuru yet, not yet. Yes, yes. It's not. It's, it's not to Huru yet. Um, as I've said earlier, it's, it does not uh, make too much sense to put um, uh, too much accent on the figures emanating from the NCDC because uh, some of these are products of suppressed testing. Uh, products of um, non-submission of samples and uh, other factors. 
So we cannot say that the epidemiology situation in Nigeria is the result of um, effective testing. But mm. we are happy all the same that these uh, figures are going down. When you compare what we have now to sometime in May, you can at least um, be grateful that the situation is not as worrisome as it used to be. Mm. Uh, the situation is a lot better, but eternal vigilance, they say, is the price of liberty. So Nigerians should remain vigilant. They should continue to um, abide by the protocols set up by the PTF. That's how we can ultimately defeat this pandemic. And there are countries of the world that we can draw examples from. New Zealand, even um, uh, Germany. Germany has done a good job of battling and effectively keeping this pandemic in check. So some of these countries have done, have achieved what they've achieved due to their resilience and determination and focus. We just have to continue uh, to, to, to do our best to battle this disease. Yeah. I our response is largely, and even the efforts that we are making to ease the restrictions are examples drawn from India. But as we can see, India is partly regretting easing up because India set a record last week, a world record, at 78,000 new infections in one day. So it means that the more you open up, the greater the danger of new infections or even a new wave of infections. So we just have to remain vigilant. It's not yet Uhuru. The end has not come. And the government has not told us that, look, the end has come. But the government realizes that you can uh, continue to keep these restrictions in place. You must ease the, uh, the restrictions gradually so that we do not uh, allow the economy to die because uh, we want to, uh, to uh, save the lives of as many Nigerians as possible. Right. People right. are going through a lot. Look at uh, the, even the, uh, the threat to food security mm. as a result of flooding and the fact that in the heat of the pandemic, many farmers could not go to their farms. Yeah. We're having problems now with grains, especially maize. Poultry farmers are in serious danger of uh, watching their their business die before their eyes. Yeah, uh, did they, did they, uh, and in they this can't regard, find, uh, I mean, they, they found feed meals extremely expensive. Yeah, did they in this regard. Extremely Ke expensive. Kebi Ke is... Uh, because is, maize, okay. maize is rare to find. Mm. So this is the thing. They, we, 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 we've suffered from this pandemic and we, we, continue, we must continue to do our best. Even to, though it, it, to ensure it, that things do not degenerate. It, even though we are not learning these hard lessons uh, the hard way, I think we need to learn the hard way. Okay, finally, um, Asukwa, let's uh, get back to Lagos. Lagos, which became uh, not palatably the epicenter of the, uh, of the uh, pandemic when it first broke. It still has placed restrictions on bars, nightclubs, and other places yet to be lifted. Good, bad, <laughs> indifferent. Indifferent? <laughs> <laughs> because it, the, the thing is, even the churches and the monks that uh, we are open, you know, not everybody has gone to church. You know, if, if, whether uh, you are 65, you are le less than that, mm. or even the YouTube. If you go to churches, it's as, it's as scanty as uh, anything, you know. So, but, but I'm even looking at these bars and nightclubs, how they've been surviving. Although the Lagos State, you know, had a, a, a plan for them that if you want to open, you can come and register, then they mm. will tell you the protocols you need to follow. Mm. You know, I know some of them have been opening, but not opening as in opening the, like the normal way they are supposed to open. Yeah, but 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 I, 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 come on, are you listening to yourself? You, mm -hmm. you talked earlier on about uh, the Nigerian way. Mm -hmm. mm. 
Yeah, the because way is, uh, see, the, the, has come to play here. Yes, of course, because right now, the, if, you, if you want to open, yeah. you know, in Lagos, you need to register. You know, you must get registered, you registered into the gov by the government, and they will now tell you what and what to do to, you know, to maintain okay. that safety protocol. Okay, all mm -hmm. right. So the choice is ours. Um, uh, it is not about, this is not my portion. Uh, Yusuf and uh, JD are listening. So let's go head on. It's a pandemic. It's an, epi it's an exigency. We must play by the rules. Behave like the Joneses. Okay then, you know, still to come, soldiers and civilians flee Borono communities, seek refuge in refuge in Medjugorje, just as police have killed 15 bandits, arresting 50 suspects in Katsina State. That's another story. We'll be here shortly. Please stay. Okay then, let's uh, keep it going. You know, the grave situation in Northeast Nigeria endures uh, with the Speaker of the Borno State House of Assembly, Abubakar Lawan, raising new concerns. He has urged a rapid deployment of troops to secure the North. Over three council areas of the state have fled their domain, seeking refuge in the state capital, Medjugorje. At the same time, we can report that the police in Kasina State have dispatched 15 bandits, arrested 50 suspects, plus a number of assault rifles. The unnerving times have refused to go away. Yusuf, are you there? Uh, the crazy times have refused to go away. Adekule Yusuf. That's refused to go. You are right. That's why the fact that uh, the authorities are saying <coughs> that uh, technically defeated, whatever, whatever, whatever. Boko Haram is still a big threat to the corporate, you know, existence of our country. It's killing people, many people every day. And uh, you know what happened to the Borono governor, you know, some weeks ago? And you know what he said after, you know. So the truth is that Boko Haram is a big, you know, threat to us in this country. Uh, I don't know why those in charge have not seen a different picture. I was, I read, you know, the position of uh, uh, Arewa, uh, Arewa today, and they said that. Uh, it would be a great thing if the president can you know, change his mind. That is to say, you say the current service chiefs no longer have anything to offer, that we should try new ideas. That's the position I, I will support. Yeah, okay. Um, Jide, you know, um, we are talking about Borono State, a vast area, land mass wise. Three local governments finding it finding it very unsafe to stay in their domain and seeking refuge in the capital tells you a lot leave a lot of things to to be done but i i i don't know if you understand what i'm saying you know we are confronting yes. a frankenstein yes. we are in a very difficult situation um some of what the Speaker of the Borno State House of Assembly said, I, I had talked about them a number of times on this program. He has only validated and provided some more facts, you know, in, in terms of um, what I've always said, that there are local governments in Borno State that are no-go areas. So he talked about his own local government, he comes from Guzamala local government, 185 kilometers to the Bono State capital. And he's telling us that they have two district heads and 16 village heads, that all of them are resident in Maiduguri at this time. And he's saying that there are 172 settlements in Guzamala local government, that there is not one of those settlements where human beings are living. There's no soldier there. There's no 
civilian in the entire Guzamala local government. He also talked about Abadam local government. The Abadam local government, we have soldiers uh, guiding Malanfatori, for example, which is the local government headquarters. But the whole of the local government, nobody is staying there. He also talked about Marte. Marte, soldiers are guiding the local government headquarters. But the whole of the local government, there is not one person resident there. So there are four of those local governments in, uh, in uh, Borono North where you are not going to find anybody living there. You could find soldiers guiding a few of them. But as in the case of Guzamala local government, there is not even a single soldier guiding any local government there. You see, the, the problem of renewed attacks by Boko Haram has also made it difficult for a lot of our people who ordinarily would want to return home in the uh, rainy season. To return home, you have seen what happened in, uh, Guza, uh, in um, um, this um, Magumeri local government, mm. where an hospital that the government newly refurbished and put equipment. They came, destroyed everything, destroyed tractors that government had bought for the people and set ablaze other buildings. Who would feel comfortable to want to go back to such a place? And just some days back, in the same area, they attacked soldiers. And even ambushes are common. Ambushes wow. of our troops along the extensive Maiduguri Monguno Highway yeah. and other yeah. places. So the insecurity is ensuring that people are thinking twice about going to, uh, about returning to their homes. They do not want to live like uh, refugees in their country. But yeah. they are forced to, to remain as IDPs, internally yeah. displaced persons, because the alternative is to go home and expect death. Okay. So they are not prepared to okay. die. They would rather remain in their IDP camps and expect that one day, we will defeat the Boko Haram insurgency that has clearly now become uh, a, um, a national just an avenue yeah. for those guys to, to, to make money. They are now operating like bandits, like yeah. armed robbers. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Jide. Raiding people's uh, communities and stealing uh, their grains. Thank you, Jide. So this is the situation. In, in taking this home, uh, Asukwa, let's take you to Katsina State. The police there has reported killing 15 suspected bandits and arrested 50 more and um, captured many weapons and mm -hmm. so on. At a time, the B B Katsina governor struck a deal, that's what we were told, with the bandits. You are wondering what went wrong. Uh, well, the, the, what went wrong was, um, first, I want to say this. Those who we call bandits now, are, they have just changed their name or nomenclature, <laughs> nomenclature because they are Boko Haram insurgents who have moved to the northwest as far as i'm concerned because that is what security experts will tell you because because of the onslaughts by this by the um, the military most of them are beginning to move towards the north to Kasena, ninja sokoto and, and the rest you know so but if you are looking at just like you said these bandits when we had bandits in Kasena. The governor tried, you know, to see how we can, you know, bring peace. But when once you negotiate with a, a particular bandit, hmm. and then other bandits or other groups or bandits, they refuse to, you know, buy into what the governor, you know, uh, the the only branch that hmm. the governor is giving. There will always be issues, uh, Asuko, and, and that is uh, where the problem. Uh, that is why that particular peace accord did not work. A, a because, bandit is a bandit. Yes, he has of no course. other name. Yes, of course, because if you if they have groups, all these bandits they have groups, because mm. if you if you negotiate with bandit A, the group A, and you refuse, and group B says they are not good, they because they know that group B knows the secret of group A. Oh, come on. There will come always on. be problem, and that is why the these bandits have been you know growing bigger and bigger and they're expanding yeah and I, I i just now that the ig because i know recently the igp said he was going to see how he can mop up you know all these arms mm. now that we have seen that they have arrested more let them extract information from them 
where are these people coming from? Where are they getting the arms, you know, for them uh, because, to perpetrate uh, this uh, evil? Because, uh, I was going to say, in a 21st century world where gadgetry is the name of the game, I expect that we'll, even if we play uh, uh, catch-up, let's go technological. Let, of course, it, so only... maybe, maybe the police, they're also thinking, they, I know the police, they've even gone that way. You know, they need to expand it more so that this we, we talk about intel, <laughs> in, intelligence gathering and so on. All right, the debate continues. As, as always, is to provoke the debate and uh, allow you to make up your, your minds. Now, let's take on our last story. You know, when in April 2020, the central government finally bowed to the long-standing pressure to remove a contentious fuel subsidy, thereby deregulating the downstream sector of the industry, those who know knew that a number of things were going to give. One of them is the tangled pump price of petroleum products. As I speak with you, we are there. Marketers who are the linchpins of the oil business have jacked up the pump price of these products and we are naturally provoked. Are we a serious people, uh, Adekunle Yusuf? Are we a serious people? We are not. Okay. Hello? Uh, well, we are in business, yeah. Okay. We are not. Because when you look at uh, how many times we have spoken about fair price, fair price, and fair price, the only achievement we've been able to have in the oil industry is the fact that we are no longer fighting uh, in the first stations. Aside that, every other thing has remained the same. And even worse, unless we build the refineries, unless we refine our crude oil here, we will continue to have crises and crises and crises. But this government, the only achievement it has had in the petroleum sector, as I said, is we are no longer fighting ourselves in the look at how many times we have increased this is a time of coronavirus pandemic most families have, have not stabilized the economy itself has not stabilized but you increase the, the price of electricity you increase the price of fuel you increase everything is coming not you know to ensure welfare for the generality of the people. I don't know what is happening here because when we say uh, we bow to the almighty, you know, power of uh, my demand and supply. Fine, that is easy to say. There are a lot of other things we have not done. There are a lot of other things we've not done. In that same sector, they are, they're saying it is actually a beautiful thing if you remove subsidy. Yes, let's remove subsidy. But when we remove subsidy, must we die if mm -hmm. we remove subsidy? We don't have to die. We don't have to die because we want to remove subsidy. Look at the humongous sums of money that we spend on our refineries that don't produce anything. And the government is always, you know, coming up with the figures. In the first quarter of this year alone, it's about fifty something billion. Another one was announced last week. You see, billions on billions. We have not built one single refinery, but they would love to tell you that a modular refinery and all that. Things that you will ask them, is it, a, is it rocket science to build refineries? This administration is going to six years in office. Are we going to continue like this forever? Say, more like, are, yeah, but you said, more, more, more like asking in the manner of the musician who asked, share not like this, we go the day. But let, let's uh, go back to Jide in Abuja. Jide, we talk about the political mindset and the uh, Nigerian mentality. When you say you de deregulation, deregulation means you are going to allow market forces take over. Now, when you deregulate, do you fix a price? Do you, is it proper to fix a price or allow the market forces to sort that out? Am I communicating? Citizen Jones, um, I 
I've always asked for deregulation, but it is not full deregulation that we have at this time. It is not full deregulation. I believe that if it is full deregulation that we want to do, let's do full deregulation. And then when prices go up, after a while, the prices will come down. What we have at this time, it is NMPC alone that is importing petroleum products. Competition. It's NMPC that is bringing in uh, PMS. So how do you call that deregulation? It's not full deregulation. I hear people say, oh, we said we wanted deregulation. Now they are doing deregulation and we are, we are complaining. The regulation when it is NMPC alone that is bringing in the product? No, that's not the regulation. The regulation when it is a, a PPPRA a pricing template that we are using. And the PPRA uh, uh, pricing template in itself encourages inefficiency because in, 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 in it you see they talk about demorage, storage, transportation, um, exchange, um, exchange rates, interest rates at, at the bank, depot price, and the margin. Even the cost of storage, cost of storage for 30 days, for example, is factored into the PPRA uh, pricing template. I want to believe that. If an individual, a businessman, were to bring in the product, his, his clients, his, those who will buy the product from him, will be waiting. So there will be no need for, for storage for 30 days. These oh, yeah. are the things that drive up the price. I mean, what is demorage? He will have taken care of that and ensured that, look, he, he clears uh, his consignment in good time. And then it gets to the end user. So we have to even look at the PPPRA pricing template. Go to their website and see the pricing te template. Mm. And ask yourself if that in itself does not uh, promote inefficiency. And ask yourself if we are actually uh, experiencing real or full deregulation, whether some of those items can ever feature. What is uh, anyone's business about how the product got into the country? Yeah. I okay. believe that the price will be stabilized at some point when we fully uh, deregulate. What we have now is not, uh, it's not full deregulation. Okay. And there's a limit to which Nigerians can take what, some of what is going on. All right. We are increasing taxation. We are increasing VAT, increasing uh, electricity tariff. Even the protection, uh, protectionism that we are doing with the, our, with the currency is all happening at the same time. And then now, increase in fuel prices, or, 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 or price of PMS. It's uh, going uh, to be tough on people. Did, did the because uh, the cost of, cost of, cost of uh, food will yeah. go up as well. Cost of transportation will go up. Mm. So did, at a time when people are in other countries, in other countries when palliatives are being given to the citizens, we are not getting palliatives for our people. Instead, what they are experiencing is increase in taxes, increase in fuel prices. Yeah, G G really G let, let me stop you there. But you know, I am really shocked. Tough. I'm shocked at your surprise. I hear your country, uh, uh, James. Uh, your country can absorb any shock. So we are here. And but let let's look at uh, another angle to the the whole thing. We talk about the downstream sector. Nobody is addressing the upstream your refineries and so on and so on. This is a problem we inflicted on ourselves by ourselves. So where yeah, do we go from yeah, here? Because if, like the GDS, there, 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 like, there must like be some, some kind of politics or oil politics I, I don't understand. Yeah, I don't know. No, no, every day there's, there's politics everywhere, you know. And, and the, 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 the problem we are having is because we have not found a solution to the refineries. <laughs> because if, and then this, you know, I remember when we used to hear turnaround maintenance. <laughs> turnaround maintenance has been there for many years. Turnaround, turnaround. I was thinking by the time this government will come, we won't be hearing that they are even still fixing those refineries. I remember when they were even saying, keep this, sell these refineries. 
But people were saying no. Mm. I know the, the unions were saying no, that they should not sell the refineries. Yeah. You know? And that is why the NNPC is both the sell, person, sell, is sell having the knife sell, and the sell, yam. Sell, sell, sell the, refinery, you the know, refineries to who? To, to, to experts. Now, listen. We, we can only sell refineries to those who know how to manage refineries. Mm -hmm. We cannot sell it to their cronies. We must not sell refineries to cronies. We must not sell it because th that is the problem we are having with even the, uh, the discos and the jenkos, whereby mm -hmm. they just decided to sell it to their people, and at the end of the day, it was the same government that gave them bailouts for mm -hmm. them to start the business. <laughs> you know, so like the NMPC. Is the one that ha they are the ones running the refineries, even when they they keep you know um, re um, they're fixing the refinery, we they've not yeah. even produced anything. So yeah. if is either we 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 look for a way, right now the only thing we are even waiting for now is even Dangote refinery. Oh come on, you know. Yeah. So that, and uh, that is we will keep having it, this problem. It will be we'll ready keep, next month, right? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, okay, sorry, no, we'll just keep having no, this I problem. You knew. And the, and the thing is. Just like GDI has said, everybody has a limit to, you know, to this suffering. And the government needs to start listening to the cries of the people. The, 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 the burden is too much. Okay. From tax to electricity to stamp duty, we have not even finished that. You know, back to back to back to back. We are th thinking that, oh, the next moment, we don't even know. But tomorrow now, next week, people will just be waiting. What, what else is the government going mm -hmm. to bring? You know? uh, all right, okay, but uh, I know that uh, Adekule Yusuf, like my humble self, and uh, maybe Jide and uh, uh, Asukwa, um, we all have our idea of a country of the country of our alternate reality. We want a better country. Yusuf, we are not ready to to, to pay the price. We have. Where? <laughs> Where? Uh, it's not that we are not ready to pay the price. Honestly, Nigerians, when you give them good leadership, mm -hmm. they are very, very understanding and they are very, very appreciative. Yes. That is, that is not what we are getting. That is not what we are getting. Go and read about the books on oil sector, especially our refineries, the NMPC. It's about losses and losses mm -hmm. and losses and losses everywhere. And at this moment, Hmm. When most families are struggling, are these families when most when people, especially I mean the salary earners, are unable to collect their salary or they are sacked or they are mm -hmm. put on uh, half salary or they are sent home or they are forced leave or whatever? Hmm. That is not the time for any any country that is sensitive, any any leadership that is sensitive. When you look at DSTV, it's going up, mm -hmm. VAT is increasing. Uh, electricity is increasing. Uh, everything we are increasing and increasing. What it shows is that we have, you know, a leadership that is totally oppressive, that is totally insensitive, that is totally ungodly. Because uh, uh, there is no other way to describe it. Yeah. Nigerians, don't, you don't need to kill them all in the name of uh, we want to create a better society. We and uh, Yusuf, let, let, I put it to you that. As a Nigerian, me and Ogo die. I don't know about you, <laughs> you know. Uh, Jide, in taking this thing home now, um, in those days of, in, in the days of yore, we talked about pouring oil on troubled waters. So what do you pour on troubled oil as we go? Well, I, I, I don't think the intention of the government is, is simply to kill Nigerians. Some of the methods may not actually be achieving the results that we desire. But the important thing for us to do is to encourage the government to listen to the right advice. You have set up an economic team made up of some of the best economists in our country that we can summon at this time. Listen to them. Let's hear from them. In which direction should we be headed? We are not saying that the government oh, is insensitive, it wants to kill people and all that. No. In other countries, they rely so much on taxation. But there are certain things that we have to put in place so that we, we now become a country that is not heavily dependent oh, no, on, uh, on a petrol dollar. And we can depend a lot more on, our, on production and on the taxes that our people pay. And then, of course, the 
avenues through which the resources of our country are leaking. We have to plug those avenues. How can you have an NMPC? You have uh, refineries that are antiquated, that are literally dead, that mm. are not achieving any results, uh, and uh, you uh, continue right. to pump G money, to G G allow G it G to incur expenditure of all sorts. Gide, you every continue one of us, no, no, hold to on, allow, Gide, you Gide, continue to allow Gide, the, sorry, the refinery to Gide, record losses, all Gide, kinds of losses. All of us are agitated. We have to bite the bullet at some point. All right, bring the bullet. We have to put an end to that. I bring the bullet, but let's end the show here. But let me thank you uh, for your time. One hundred and something billion. You didn't know vex, so please. Losses. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so refineries right. that are even Gide, outdated. Oh, Gide, how, how do we <clears> stop this, man? Now, go. Treat your, they, are not, treat. they are not producing. Okay. Go have a treat at a five-star hotel. Send the bills to us. Uh, thank you for your time, Gide. <laughs> and uh, let's also thank uh, uh, Yusuf. Yusuf Adekunle for your time. Thank you very kindly. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> Asukwa As As James, many thanks. Okay, folks, that will just about do it for the program on uh, for today and the week. If you missed this episode, join us on other platforms will display on the screen for you and on YouTube at TVC, uh, youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria, TVC News Nigeria. The feedback channel remains the same. I'm Citizen Jones. Bye-bye now.